Let me ask you something. These people on this sign right here, the American blacks, right? The West Indians, these are the Jamaicans, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, Mexicans, right? Do you think these people are living good lives and living living great on this earth right now? Heck no. These are the people that are in the ghettos. That's in the prisons. These are the people that are struggling and suffering. Whenever you want to find these people, all you got to do is go to the ghetto. You want to find black people, go to the hood. You'll find them struggling, strung out on drugs, persecuting, robbing, stealing, doing all manner of evil. Why do you think it is that in black and Hispanic communities, that type of behavior is going on? But then when you go to white communities, it's thriving, success, nice cars, big houses, living good. Why do you think that is? Huh? You're not sure. See, now we get into some good questions. Because the reason why these things happen is because of our sin. We turn, watch this, give me Amos. I'm on chapter uh, three and verse one, okay? Watch what the Bible says, because all throughout the ghettos and the hoods, you got churches everywhere, right? But yet, are people still dying? Are people still on dope? Are people still robbing? Are people still in gangs? Are people still in and out of jail? Baby mamas, dudes not taking care of their kids. All manner of evil going on in our communities, but there's churches everywhere. All of our people claim to be Catholics and Christians, but something's wrong. Something's wrong. Come on. The book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 1. Come on. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. See, when you go to the white man's school system, uh, the high school, uh, Corpus Christi Independent School District, that was set up by our enemies that conquered us in slavery. So when you go to those schools, you're going to learn that you are African American, you are Mexican, you are uh, Puerto Rican. When none of these names, African American, Puerto Rican, uh, Dominican, Mexican, none of, these, none of these names are in the Bible. But God named all the races and all the different nations in the Bible. He named them. But somebody came along and conquered everybody and changed the names. That's the reason why we've been called these different names. But when you go into the Bible, you don't see these names. These are the names you see. You see the 12 tribes of Israel. You see Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Issachar. You see these different names. These are our real names. Read that again. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. See, God is speaking to the children of Israel. When you, because I can't pronounce this word. That's, that's I, Ephraim. 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 So now, whenever you go into the church, right, this is the main book that they're reading, the Bible. They all holding up the Bible, right? This is the same Bible that's in all of these churches. But they don't tell you that this Bible was written to the Israelites. Right. This Bible is addressed to the Israelites from the beginning. All you got to do is sit down and read it. It's addressed to the Israelites from the beginning all the way to the end. Right? But who are these people that God is talking about? Who's going to tell you? Read. Oh, children of Israel, uh -huh. against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, Come on. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. So hold on now. Because in church they tell you God loves everyone. God loves everybody. Well, that can't be true. Because the Bible just said, read that part again. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. You see that? You only have I known of all the families of the earth. God is only dealing with one people. Hold that real quick. Keep your finger there and go to Joel. All right? I want Joel, Joel chapter 2 verse chapter 7. Chapter 2 verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. God said he's in the midst of the children of Israel. Read. And that I am the Lord your God and none else. Meaning I'm not the God of anybody else. I'm your God. Because guess what? If God was the God of these other nations, then why wouldn't God judge them for doing this to us? Putting us in slavery, slaughtering the Native American Indians, slaughtering the Aztec Indians, taking the land, rape, robbing, and pillaging them. Why wouldn't God judge them for that? Because guess what? He gave them, a, he's not dealing with them on that level. Watch this, go back to Amos. Watch what it says in Amos again. Watch what it says. You only. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Uh -huh. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquity. So the word iniquity is sin. God said, I'm only dealing with y'all. 
I'm only dealing with these people right here, the 12 tribes. So when you do evil, I'm going to punish you. I'm going to punish you. I'm not worried about them and what they're doing. I'm worried about you. Because guess what? When we're doing good and we're following God's laws and we're doing what God commanded us to do, these other people would not be able to conquer us. They wouldn't be able to rule over us. But And they know that. They know that. So what do they do? They set up this country and they set up these neighborhoods to, to breed more sin and more evil in us. Where do you think we get the dope from to sell? Where do you think we get the guns from? Where do you think we get, uh, how do you think we're miseducated? It's, we're targeted. It's not, it's not by chance, it's not by accident. How do you think that we are the majority in prison? What, white people don't do crime? No, hell yeah they do crime. But they don't get the time. Right. We're the ones that get the time. Exactly. That's a judgment from God. God is allowing this to happen because why? Just like the brother said, in our affliction, we'll seek him early. God is waiting for to see when are they going to turn to me. Right? Now, let me ask y'all a question. What do you think the most important thing when worshiping God is? What do you think the most important thing to God is? Your belief. Your belief, what you think? Your faith, right? Your faith, right? Okay, so let me ask you this. If you, if I believed that I was gonna get a job uh, being a bus driver over here with RTA, right? What would I do? If I believed that God was gonna give me a job over there, what would I do? What would be the first thing I would do? I would go apply for the job. Because I believe, I, I'm never going to get it if I don't go ask them for the job. I got to go apply for the job. So your belief should be followed by some type of action. Guess what? If you believed you was the best man on earth, guess how you would carry yourself as the best man on earth? All right. If you believed that you was a good father, guess what? You would be in part of your kid's life every day. You would, be showing, you would be showing other people what it means to be a good father because you believe in your skills as being a father. Us as the children of God, the, uh, the best way that we can show that we believe and trust in God is through what? It's through our obedience towards God. Because if God says, thou shalt not steal, and you say, yeah, I believe in you, God, but then you go and steal, that shows that you don't believe in, you don't respect God because you're not doing what he says. It's just like your kids, if you have children and you tell them, listen, I expect you to keep the house clean and do your chores. And they say, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you go to work and then you come back and the house is dirty, clothes everywhere, dishes piled up in the sink. You're gonna be mad. You're gonna be mad as a parent, why? Because they didn't obey your word. So you're not gonna go and buy them new PlayStation. You ain't gonna go out and take them to Peter Piper. You ain't doing none of that stuff, because why? They didn't do what they were supposed to do as your child. So us as the children of God, what does that mean? We must do the That's things. That God said. Exactly. So now, give me that in 1 John 2 and verse the 3. The book of 1 John chapter 2 verse 3. And hereby we do know that we know him. So this is how we know that we know God. This is how we know we have a relationship. Because people always say, yeah, I know God. I pray to him all the time. I got a relationship with God. But do you really? Because in order to get to know God, first you got to read this Bible. You got to read his word to find out what he's about. You got to find out how, how do I have real access to him. Come on. If we keep his commandments, Come on. he that saith, I know him and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar. So it says if you say that you know God and you believe in him, but you don't keep his commandments, it says you're a liar. You don't really know God. You don't really love God. You don't really respect him. So now, I'm about to show y'all, I'm about to show y'all the problem with our people today. The reason why we're all uh, struggling out here, life ain't easy here. It's hard. You know why? Let me ask you a question. Can you name the Ten Commandments? No, I can't. Not right off. Now, right now he, read a, he read one of the commandments where it says a, a man's not supposed to shave his beard off, right? Yeah. That's not even in the Ten Commandments. No. Which no. shows that there's more than ten. Thou shalt not lie. Okay, thou that's not in the not Ten not Commandments. Go ahead. Not? No. So, can you name the Ten Commandments? Can you name eight of them? That's what I was you see that? That's the, that's the reason why we struggle and suffer. That's the reason why we have a hard time here. Give me that in Joshua 1 and 8. Watch, I'm going to show you why, why keeping the commandments is so important. Because God told you, if you keep God's commandments, if you keep His commandments, His word, if you're obedient to what He tells you, then He'll bless you. But, 
Guess what? A lot of our people think it's so hard and it's impossible to do. What's so hard about not stealing? All you gotta do is get a job. Right. And get an honest job. Okay, you, you get a job, you're not making enough money. Okay, go to trade school. Go get a trade. Work harder. Get two jobs. I've worked two jobs for the majority of my life. And I'm doing just fine. I ain't killing myself. And I don't have to steal a damn thing. All right. <laughs> so what's so hard about that should not kill? You don't don't go out looking for trouble. Stay away from the people that you wanna that, that will get on your damn nerves. It's not that hard. Don't run with the don't run with the wrong crowd. Don't that the, the Bible says thou should not commit adultery. How how hard is it not to sleep with another man's wife? That's his wife. Get your own wife. <laughs> There's many single women out here. Go find one and marry her. But no, our people don't want to do that. Our people want to go contrary to God's commandments. Watch this. The book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. So the book of the law is the Bible. That's another word for the Bible. Come on. But thou shalt meditate therein, day and night. What does it mean to meditate? Keep on. To meditate means to think about it. Yeah. Meaning you're thinking about it. In order to meditate on the word of God means you have to read it. You have to read it and think about what you just read. And say, you know what? Yeah, that sounds Check good. In. I need to I need to find a way yeah, to I apply this. Like Alright, bro, go ahead. Yes, sir, man. Come on. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. So you thinking about these commandments so that you can observe to do what's written in the Bible. Because a lot of times when we go to church, we cry, we sing, we give money, but then we don't do the things that are written in the book. We go right back to our same way of living. We go right back to the alcohol. We go right back to the drugs. We go right back to the whoring ourselves out. We go right back to the clubs. We go right back to uh, doing all manner of sin instead of applying what we've read, applying what we've learned. Come on. Read that part again. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Come on. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Uh -huh. And then thou shalt have good success. So God says once you start to do his word and apply his commandments into your life and be obedient unto his words, that's when you'll start to have success. You ever wonder why you try to go and get a job and you try to do something and it doesn't work out? It doesn't work out it's because... God blocked it from you. Yes. God closed that door on you. I've happened. I've had that happen a lot to me before. Right. You know? and, and that's be, and that's a result of our sin. Because guess what? This brother, he's had doors closed on him before he started to keep the commandments. I've had many doors closed on me before I started to keep God's commandments. But then I started to read and I started to My apply it. My doors college is completely shut not too long ago. You, you said what? I doors, you know, from going into college, I uh -huh. wanted to go back into college, and like... Yeah, but there's... So, so, these are the things you must do, though. Remember what we just read. If you want these doors to be open unto you, you have to keep God's right. commandments. That's the main thing you have to do. Okay? Like, for instance, like, for instance, give me uh, Deuteronomy 25. This is just a, a simple one, the other one. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. And this, this is not taught in many churches. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. Yep. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So the Bible says a woman... I already know that shall, What does that mean? I, I asked the last time. Right, what does it mean? Women should not wear pants. Right, but you, but you learn that and then you still do it. I know. That's a part of the problem, right? We shall Give wear me, dresses. Um, Read, finish that, I finish that verse. You had the last time. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Right, meaning you're an abomination to God when you do those things. Why is that? Here, see these people fly. Have a sister fly. I want to try to go to AA, and I really have a, I have a hard power. Okay. But I am uh, trying to change my life. Okay. So, so let me, so let me, let me, let me give you some advice. Some some biblical advice. Yes. Right? Uh-huh. Give me um give me Psalms one and verse one. Right? Psalms chapter one, verse one. Okay. So you was over there listening and you said, let me go over there. Yeah, that's right. good. I need to go into the restroom. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna read this scripture to you. Watch this. 
The book of Psalms, chapter 1, verse 1. Uh -huh. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So the Bible says, blessed is the man. The Bible is written in a masculine form, so it's also talking about the woman too. Amen. So it says, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Meaning, when you get advice or counsel from people, you have to make sure that these people are godly people. Because when you get advice from people who are not godly, it's not coming from God, it's coming from their own spirit. Right? Come on. Nor standeth in the way of sinners, uh -huh. nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Meaning you, your, your surroundings is around people of God. Meaning you're not hanging around people who don't follow God's commandments, who are not seeking after God. Have, you haven't discriminated like, you know, Right. Uh, but guess what? You have to discriminate. I got one I mean, I love you have to discriminate. You know why you have to discriminate? I'm a, I'm a, I understand that. I'm, I understand, but I'm trying to I'm trying to give you some advice. I'm trying to give you some advice. Just listen to me for a second. You have to you have to discriminate. The reason why you must discriminate is because if I'm a recovering crack addict, the last people, the last person I need to hang around is another crackhead. Because why? I'm gonna eventually smoke crack again. I'm gonna eventually relapse. If I'm an alcoholic and I'm trying to stop becoming an alcoholic, yes. the last place I need to be is in a bar. Yes. You get what I'm saying? Yes. Am I discriminating no. against that bar for me not being there? No, it's just not for me. It's not for me. Yes. So in your life, you have to see. Watch what this is what the Bible is trying to say. Read it. We again. used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.